Well, welcome back. You know, as the coronavirus news continues to be the top of mind for a lot of folks around the country and, of course, here in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota's first case was uh, d identified yesterday in Ramsey County. We know there are a lot of questions. It's important to keep all this in perspective and really know the facts, and there is a lot of fear out there. So we're really uh, trying to clarify that and, uh, and get you some answers. And we've had a lot of great questions coming in over the last few days and a lot this morning. And if you'd like to ask questions, we have answers coming to you directly from the, our doctor, 763-797-7215. And Dr. Mark Sanis is an infectious disease specialist at Health Partners, and he's been helping us throughout the week answer your questions because a lot of folks um, have so many, and they're really nervous. I mean, they, I have, when I've been around people this week, it's been one of two things. It's mm -hmm. been, why is this such a huge deal, and should we be more alarmed than we already are? That's kind of what I'm getting from the friends and family that I'm talking to. Sure, and it's, it's a fair question, I think we have gotten somewhat accustomed to seasonal influenza, and as a result, why is this any different? I think the biggest difference is we have not seen this virus in humans before. So COVID-19 is new, and we are susceptible to getting it as a consequence of not having seen this before. It also has, in a subset of the population, largely the elderly and those with other medical problems, more severe consequences. So we're talking, and I've heard uh, different percentages. So in that population, the percentage of death is where are we at? It's between one to three percent? Probably in that two percent range. 2%. It's really difficult to guess entirely on that because the experience in China is going to be different than the experience in other parts of the world. Uh, the China experience was about 2.3%, uh, mm -hmm. at least thus far. We'll see if that plays out uh, with similar numbers in other parts of the world. So that, that kind of goes right to our first question. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of our few, and a lot of great questions coming in for our viewer, from our viewers, so we really appreciate that. So with influenza, it affects two, two different populations, the very young and the very old. But right. we're finding with this COVID-19 coronavirus, it's mainly the elderly that, are, that already have some... Uh, issues prior, right? Prior That's right. issues. That's right. So if you look at the, again, at the China experience, it was that group that was older than 60 years of age, mm -hmm. uh, those that had pre-existing heart, pre-existing lung conditions, diabetes, and high blood pressure that looked to be at the highest risk for the more severe complications of needing to be hospitalized, needing to be in the critical care sort of setting. I saw a bunch of questions. In one particular, I saw that, that, that a, g a gal was wondering, she has a um, uh, uh, her husband has COPD, wondering if they should be traveling on a plane even tomorrow. They're trying to go to Florida tomorrow. It's a great question. I think all of these are sort of individual risk mm -hmm. tolerance questions, and uh, it's hard to make those decisions for people. Yes. I think uh, it is possible as this virus evolves that where we are may be riskier than where we are going. Uh, so a lot of people are trying to, you know, especially with spring break at this time of year, the question is coming up. Should I stay here or should I go to whatever destination yep. uh, I have planned? I think for those with some of these higher risk medical conditions, that risk tolerance becomes a, a very real conversation in saying, all right, it, is this the time that I should be traveling or not? Is it and, worth it? Yeah. Correct. And so should, should that person actually, if they can, wear a mask then, the person that has that? It turns out that wearing a mask if you are well isn't all that helpful. The mask really should be put on the individual that is sick, you know, okay. and preventing uh, transmitting this from, to others. It's a virus that, you know, we always talk about sort of arm's reach away, six feet, six feet is sort yeah. of the, the, the going distance that we think this virus will um, effectively transmit close person to person. Uh, having a mask on really isn't all that helpful, helpful when it comes yeah. to that. We had a really interesting question. Uh, one of our viewers said that they thought they possibly had it, mm -hmm. and now they're getting better. Um, should they get tested? A good question. I think the criteria for getting tested aren't a lot different. We've expanded the criteria this week, but still having traveled to one of these areas with community transmission, China, Iran, Italy, uh, South Korea, Japan is in that next tier down. Having been there or having been exposed to a person who had COVID-19 certainly are the biggest risk factors. We've added to that this week more severe pneumonia. I think for someone that has gotten better from their respiratory illness, it's unlikely that they would be tested if they showed up. Okay. And then another question that came in, um, if you did get it, can you get it again or do you have an immunity for it? Yeah, honest answer is we don't know. Okay, uh, this because is it's a, brand new. It's a novel virus. That said, based on experience with other similar viruses like SARS in 2002, probably not. You're probably not going to get it again, mm -hmm. uh, but too early to say.
And really, I think what this brings to bring, brings to uh, the forefront is just to try to stay as healthy as you can. We're actually going to have someone on in just a little while from Lifetime talking about different mm -hmm. kinds of supplements. Um, and then, you know, obviously washing hands and staying at home if you have anything going on, not, not uh, venturing out. From very early on. And it's a similar message that we give for preventing influenza every year, yeah. right? Wash your hands, cover your cough, stay home if you're sick particularly relevant now, uh, especially if you're in one of those folks that has some of the higher risk uh, conditions. Well, Dr. Sanis, we so appreciate you being here and staying throughout the, our two hour show. And I know you're gonna be answering questions live on Facebook, yeah. um, on Facebook uh, through live throughout the show. And we'll have you back in the second hour with more questions that are coming in from the text. Thanks.